So if you're a DJ or an electronic music fan that wants to learn how to make dance music, you've probably been told that Ableton is a great tool to help you do that. But if you've tried to learn Ableton, or maybe online or from a friend, you've probably ended up feeling a little bit like this. So, in this video, we're gonna do two things. Number one, we're gonna make Ableton way less intimidating so that you know your way around a little bit and you can go and use other tutorials to build on the knowledge that you want to learn. And secondly, in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn by doing. So I'm gonna show you how to make this really simple beat. Uh, it's nothing special, but by the end of this video, you'll be able to do this yourself and then go and apply this. So hopefully, this is an unintimidating, jargon-free, introduction to making music in Ableton Live for you. So here we go guys, this is what you're going to see when you first open up Ableton Live. Now let's just really quickly check that you're going to be able to hear what we're doing. So you can come to Live Preferences on a Mac or Option Preferences if you're on a PC and you want to come to the audio output device. Now I've got a Scarlett plugged in, but if you're using just headphones plugged into your computer, that's gonna be your built-in sound card. Okay, so make sure that's selected. You can test the audio here. And there we go. I'm getting that through the headphones that I've got connected to my Scarlett, but you can select built-in if that's what you're using. So the first thing to note is that Ableton has two different views. You've got the session view that we're looking at just here, and you've also got the arrangement view, which you can view by pressing tab on your keyboard or pressing on these lines just up here in the top right corner. Okay, we're going to be working in the session view today. So this is where you capture all of your ideas. And then this arrangement view is where you make them into a full track once you've got ideas that you like. So first things first, we're making a drum beat. So we want some drum sounds to be able to work with. Now, where do we get those from? We get them from the Ableton Live browser just over here on the left hand side. This contains sounds and audio effects, loads of stuff for you to work with are all in this browser on the left. Select drums and what you're going to find is a bunch of pre-made drum kits that Ableton have put together for us that all sound really, really cool. So you can click on these to preview them and pick which ones you like. The 606 through to the 909 are all based on really famous drum machines by a company called Roland. You might have heard of an 808 or a 909. These kits are based on those famous drum kits. So I'm going to use the 909 because that works really nicely for house, techno, that kind of thing. So to load this drum kit, I'm just going to drag it onto an empty MIDI track that we see just here. So we've now loaded that drum kit, and if you click on these play buttons just down here, you'll be able to hear the drum sounds that you've got to work with. Now make sure that you don't press any of these M or S buttons by accident. They're mutes and solos, and that's gonna interrupt with us making this pattern. So you might have a couple of questions here, like what is a MIDI track, and what is this thing that we've just loaded? I'm going to try and make this a bit clearer with an analogy for you. So picture a piano. You've got a bunch of different white and black keys that each play a different note. Well, inside music production software like Ableton, we use a tool called a sampler to lay down sounds. You can think of a sampler as a piano, but instead of playing piano sounds when you press a note, you're able to load whatever sound you want to onto each of these keys. Now, what we've just loaded here is a type of sampler which Ableton calls a drum rack, and it has 16 different sounds loaded into it which we're gonna be using to make our beat. And you can see these 16 different sounds just here. So where is this magical drum piano and how do we play it? Well, at this stage, we're ready to start putting our drum pattern down. So we're gonna put this pattern down inside a MIDI clip. Double click on an empty clip slot on this MIDI track to create an empty MIDI clip. So here we go. This is our magical drum piano that we're gonna be using to make our beat. Now you can expand this view up or down just here if you need a little bit more space to work with. And also what I'll point out is that this bottom section here 
can be in two different views. You remember we were looking at the drum rack earlier, and now we're looking at the piano roll. You can switch between these two different views using the tabs in the bottom right hand corner here. So this is the device view, the device is the drum rack or a reverb if we loaded that on here. And then we can come back to the clip view and this is the MIDI clip that we created and this is where we're gonna be putting our beat. So running along horizontally is time and then coming up here, we've got all of the different drum sounds that we can use to make this beat. So click on this blue little headphone and click on these notes to hear the drum sounds again. As you heard at the start, we're gonna be making a kind of boots and cats and boots and cats kind of beat. So to quickly get an idea of how fast this is gonna be played once we play this MIDI clip, click on the two dots up here, which is gonna turn on your metronome, and then hit play on this MIDI clip that we've just created, which is where we're gonna be putting our notes. Those bleeps that we're hearing are the beats, and that's how quickly our drum beat's gonna be going. The first thing that we want is a nice boomy kick drum, okay? And that's the boots of the Boots and Cats beat. We want that to be playing where those clicks were, which were one, two, three, and four, like a doof, 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 which is called a four to the floor kick drum. To draw these kick drums in, all you need to do is double click on the grid. Okay, there we go. I've just created a kick drum there. Now make sure that this pencil icon is unchecked because it's easier to draw in these notes with this gray. Okay, so feel free to pause this video and have a go at putting the rest of those in and then play it again to see if you got it right. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. So let me show you where the rest of those kick drums will go. Let's listen to the bleeps. Okay, and then let's play that again. Awesome, so hopefully you got that right. If not, no worries. We're gonna to start to layer on top of this now. And now that we've got that kick drum to keep us in time, we can turn off this metronome because it can get a little bit annoying. So the next thing that we're gonna add is the cats of the boots and cats beat, which is a hand clap. So boots and cats and boots and cats. Again, feel free to pause the video and have a go at putting those claps in. My tip would be they happen on the second and fourth kick drum. Okay, cool. So this is the clap that we're going to be using. You probably recognize it if you've listened to a lot of house music or techno. So as I said, they go on the second and fourth kick drum. So let's draw these in here. And they're fine to go on top of each other. Now let's have a listen to that. Okay, that's coming along nicely. The other thing that we want to add in is called an offbeat hi-hat. Now, everything that we've entered so far has been on a beat or has been on one of those boop, 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 boop kind of clicks. So the hi-hat that we want to add in is an offbeat hi-hat. That means that it's in between the beats. Okay, so we're gonna be putting the hi-hat, either any of the closed or open hi-hats, they're offbeat, okay? So we're gonna be putting them in between the beats, so here. In between these two and in between these two. Okay, so let's have a listen to that. There we go, we've got our basic boots and cats beat. What I'd encourage you to do at this point is throw some other stuff into this MIDI clip and see what sounds good. Some of it's gonna sound rubbish, but some of it is gonna sound really cool. Now, the things that I would recommend experimenting with are these rim shots, the snare drums, and whichever closed hi-hat you didn't use. So I'm gonna throw a couple of bits in here just to show you what I mean. Uh, let's go for the snare drum. I kind of know that they sound good there, but feel free to just experiment. Um, and let's add in a rim shot here right at the start. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for gaps, okay, where there's nothing, um, and sort of filling those with bits to just add to the groove, okay? Then I'm gonna add, add another hi-hat just at the end here to finish it off nicely. 
let's have a listen to that. Okay, so have a go with that. And then what I'm gonna do is show you how to make this clip a bit longer and how to add a little bit more feel and groove to this. Okay, cool. So hopefully you've had a go at throwing some stuff into this clip and you've had a bit of fun with experimenting there. What I'm gonna do is show you how to extend this to be more than just a one bar loop, how to turn it into a two, four, eight or 16 bar loop. And then I'm gonna show you how to add a little bit more of a human feel to this. So. First things first, you've got this duplicate loop or dupe loop button just here. If I click on that, it's going to duplicate the loop from a one bar loop to a two bar loop. Okay. There we go. And you can see that the length has changed to two just there and it's copied the pattern. We could just change this length setting just here to four, for example, but then it doesn't copy the notes across. So you can either copy them across yourself or sort of start from scratch. So I prefer to do the duplicate loop setting. So I'm gonna press undo, which is control or command Z, and then shift this back down by using this zoom just here, okay? So to add a little bit of feel, I'm gonna just go back down to a one bar drum loop, and then zoom down again. And something to think about is if you were listening to a real drummer, not every single hit is going to be the same volume, and that's what gives drums a really nice feel. Okay, so these snare drums, I want the first one to be a bit quieter and the second one to be a bit louder. The way that you can do that is using these red bars at the bottom, which indicate the velocity or how hard something's been hit. So we can drag that one down. Or before I do that, let's listen to how they sound at the moment, these two snare hits here. Okay, so I want the first one to be a little bit quieter, so I'm gonna drag the velocity, or how hard it's been hit, down, and you can hear that get quieter. Or louder. So I'm gonna have that down a bit. Let's have a listen to that. Okay, so let's do the same thing to the hi-hat. So I'm gonna have the first one and the third one a little bit louder than the second and fourth one, just to give it a little bit more groove, as I say. So let's drag this down a little bit, this down a little bit. Okay, great. And the last thing that you can do to add a little bit of groove to this is use a groove file. Now, what that is, is it just adds a bit of kind of a natural drummer's feel to this MIDI pattern by shifting things slightly off the grid to give it a bit of swing. The way to do that is come to the groove section just here and press on this button. Okay, and the folder that we want here is MPC, like the old drum machines. So um, we're gonna open this folder and we're gonna come down to 16 swing. Great, so 16 swing, you can see these just here. We're going to click on these and it's going to give us a preview of how much it's going to sort of swing the notes in our clips. So 53 won't be doing a huge amount. But then if I click on 62. Okay, 59 sounds pretty good. So we're going to drag this into where it says groove and then hit commit. Now you can see these notes have shifted about a bit. That is no longer directly on the grid and neither's this. And that's gonna give the drums a really nice feel, okay? So let's have a listen to that. Okay, and this hi-hat has also been shifted a little bit as well. So it's just adding a nice bit of feel to the drums. So there we go, guys. I really hope that's been helpful for you. And if you do wanna take this a little bit further, then I'd recommend having a look down in the description below because I'm gonna to link to my best resources to carry on learning Ableton from this point. That's gonna be changing over the coming weeks and months because I've got free courses coming out and then some more in-depth stuff coming a little bit later on. So if you've got any questions that you need answers to now, then there's a couple of things that you can do. 
go down and check the comments because someone might have asked that question and had it answered in the comments. If they haven't, feel free to leave a comment. But what I would recommend is that you jump over to my Facebook group, Music Production Explained. I'm active in there every day to answer your questions. So that's where I'd recommend getting hold of me um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. My name's John Holt and on this channel, I do a lot of music production tutorials mainly focused towards beginners. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. And I really hope to see you in another video again soon. Take care.